Are you part of a nonprofit organization, a youth group looking to raise cash for your cause? Stay tuned at the end of this video to learn how you can bring the action and excitement of the Millennium Wrestling Federation to your town live, featuring the superstars and legends of yesterday, today, and tomorrow. This is Mick Foley. This is Harley Race. This is Shelton Benjamin. This is Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff. This is the Monster Abyss. And this is Daniel Bryan. This is JBL, and you're watching the MWF. Be there live. Wrestling fans from around the corner and around the world, welcome to another installment of Wrestling Insiders from MWF Studios just north of Boston in downtown Miller's Mass in the zip code of champions 02176. This weekend we have our third WWE pay-per-view in the last six weeks with the Raw brand Extreme Rules emanating from Baltimore, Maryland Sunday night June the 4th. WWE had a monkey wrench thrown its way when the pause button had to be hit on Braun Strowman's big push. Uh, Braun was scheduled to get a big win over Roman Reigns at Extreme Rules. Building up to a July pay-per-view Universal Championship match against Brock Lesnar at Great Balls of Fire in Dallas. As a result of Strowman's injury, WWE had to merge uh, what would have been several singles matches at Extreme Rules planned into one supersized main event as Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins, Finn Balor, Bray Wyatt, and Samoa Joe collide in what is called an Extreme Rules Fatal Five-Way Number One Contenders match. It hasn't been explained that I've read or heard on TV. Um, but I'm going to guess that this is a no DQ, no count out type of match. I hate to say it, but WWE watered this one down by having so many in ring matches and interactions between the five over the past few weeks. It's been a really a dull, uncreative period for the company. Having five top talents involved in a pay per view main event like this, however, makes it an interesting must see match. Again, even if Ferrara has been dead creatively over the past few weeks with nothing more than rehashing the same matches and angles fans aren't that into as television ratings are as low as they've been in the 24 plus year history of Monday Night Raw. Well the payoff is finally here even if the past few weeks have been frustrating. Internet gambling websites, believe it or not, there are some that actually take wages on pro wrestling. Uh, they have made it to believe that Samoa Joe is going to be the victor of the Extreme Rules number one contender match. Interesting. Uh, really, he's the right man at the right time, especially where he made Seth Rollins pass out to his Coquina Clutch finisher in the Raw Tag Team main event last week. Reigns is expected to face Lesnar at WrestleMania. They're not going to hotshot that match at a, a B a pay per view with Great Balls of Fire unless they decide to change the landscape and direction for WrestleMania. You know Rollins is eventually going to get into the championship mix again. When that time comes, my educated guess is that's when we'll see the return of Stephanie McMahon, you may recall, or maybe not recall since they haven't played it up all that much, that Rollins um, accidentally assisted uh, Triple H putting Stephanie McMahon through a table at WrestleMania in Orlando. WWE showed a great angle between Finn Balor and Paul Heyman on last week's Raw that really elevated Balor, in my opinion, uh, into a serious contender. The fans believe what Paul Heyman says, they believe what Paul Heyman sells. Uh, it was done in such a way that using Finn Balor in a, a one-and-done type throwaway main event at Great Balls of Fire against Lesnar would really be a waste. And I don't think WWE is going to waste a Finn Balor-Lesnar for his time meeting. I'm also not feeling uh, Bray Wyatt for that position as well for July. Having Joe go over clean at Extreme Rules will continue to elevate him to the larger WWE audience that might not be familiar with the Samoa Joe. Uh, many fans know and love from NXT and TNA. Having a strong, intense championship match, even losing to Brock Lesnar next month in Dallas, certainly won't hurt Samoa Joe. From a business point of view, long-term and short-term, I think Joe is the right call. Uh, it's certainly not the time to have the Roman-Lesnar collision. Having the other three lose to Lesnar then be forgotten about in a championship match uh, certainly won't help them. Dean Ambrose defends the Intercontinental Championship against The Miz in a match where the title can change hands if Ambrose is disqualified. That's an old school stipulation that was usually reserved for the heels uh, that would get themselves DQ'd for trying to hang on to the title. This is another feud that feels like it's been done to death. Even if Ambrose beat The Miz to win the Intercontinental title late last year on the SmackDown television show. Having Miz win the title on some sort of screwjob DQ finish would get great heat on him and freshen up the feud a little bit as it's 
dead in my opinion. It makes sense for me to have a babyface intercontinental champion where the universal champion is rarely seen nowadays. On the flip side, with so many strong babyfaces on the Raw roster, Miz could be positioned as a honky-tonk man type champion where the fans are waiting and they're almost expecting him to lose in each big match. Also, uh, I don't know if you fans picked up on it or if WWE hyped it on its social media, but the Honky Tonk Man's 30th anniversary of winning the title, Intercontinental title from Ricky the Dragon Steamboat uh, was June 2nd, yesterday, as we're taping this on the 3rd. And Honky Tonk Man, as you may know, is the longest reigning Intercontinental Champion in WWE history at a time when the Intercontinental title would main event house shows from uh, city to city around the world. Great run, made big money. If we could only get the Intercontinental Championship belt to have that kind of meaning again. But that is a different story for a different time. The Hardy Boys defend the Raw Tag Team titles against Sheamus and Cesaro inside a steel cage. It's mind-blowing to me that the Hardy Boys have been back on WWE television for only two months. And I'm already indifferent due to the lack of creative with them. Uh, the feud with Sheamus and Cesaro has now been done to death. It's not as if the matches have been bad or anything like that. The guys are working hard. It's just the presentation is boring. Singles matches, pay-per-view title match, then more singles matches, now another pay-per-view title match. And left, unless Jeff Hardy is going to go the singles route, the Hardy should go over clean in this one to put this storyline to rest. In the women's title match, the champion Alexa Bliss defends against Bailey in a kendo stick on a pole match. Bliss's work has been great this far on the Raw brand. It uh, doesn't make any sense to me to have a title change here, especially in a gimmick match. Uh, that can lead to several underhanded scenarios for Bliss to retain her title. Neville defends the Cruiserweight Championship against Austin Aries in a submission match. This is the third straight pay-per-view. These two have faced each other from the lifeless 205 Live program. Uh, you almost have to put the title on Aries here. Having him lose via submission would hurt him and have nothing to come back with. Uh, 205 Live needs some life to it, uh, which is nothing against Neville. It's just that the show and the Cruiserweight presentation is boring right now. I don't know how else to put it. In a mixed tag team match, you have Rich Swan teaming with Sasha Banks against Noam Dar and Alicia Fox. I like this. It's something fresh. It's something new. It's something different as opposed to rehashing the same things over and over again. I don't know if WWE is planning to push Swan and Banks as a romantic item going forward, but very happy to see these athletes uh, that have appeared in the Millennium Wrestling Federation over the years joined at the hip, at least for this pay-per-view. If Swan and Banks are going to be featured together going forward, they should certainly come away with the win here at Extreme Rules. If not, it only makes sense for the Dar and Fox duo to get the victory. As a reminder, if you're in the Baltimore area, tickets to Extreme Rules are still available starting at only $25. Visit WWE.com for complete event information. If you don't currently subscribe to WWE Network fans, use the link below in our YouTube video or... Hit up the banner on the BostonWrestling.com super site that gives you one free month of WWE Network, which gives you access to both Extreme Rules this Sunday, as well as the SmackDown brand Money in the Bank June the 18th. How do you think things are going to play out in Extreme Rules? Share your thoughts and predictions in the comment section below. Don't miss the fall from WrestleMania 33 on WWE Network. Using our link below, get 30 days free. This spring, WWE presents four live pay-per-views with Payback, Backlash, Extreme Rules, and Money in the Bank. We live the ultimate thrill ride that was WrestleMania 33, plus brand new original programming, every pay-per-view in WWE history, and 7,000 plus hours of content in the archives. Spend $25 in the MWF store this month and get a free WWE t-shirt and a free autographed photo of WWE Hall of Famer Cowboy Bob Orton. We have brand new WWE t-shirts, posters, DVDs, autographs, and tons more. Best of all, every dollar you spend directly supports our live event and video production initiatives. Fans in over 30 countries can now enjoy our state-of-the-art studio shoot interview documentary collection on demand. You can rent our own select title starting at only $5.99. Enjoy the wild Iron Sheik studio shoot interview as seen by millions online and on the Howard Stern Show. Relive the rock and wrestling era in the mid-80s as WWE Hall of Famers Paul Orndorff, Bob Orton, and the Iron Sheik break down the first WrestleMania. The Boogeyman, Paul Bearer, and Kamala join us for extensive breakdowns of their careers, promoters, and companies they worked for. We also have a new shoot with Bull Dempsey bringing you a backstage look at WWE NXT and the Performance Center. Again, every rental and purchase helps support independent wrestling. Subscribe to our YouTube channel with over 1,500 videos available absolutely free. 
Enjoy in-depth videos, live MWF wrestling, the latest news, historical videos, and tons more on youtube.com slash bostonwrestling.com. If you enjoy the free content, you can help the cause by making a donation of any size to paypal.me slash bostonwrestling. You can help the cause using our links below to shop on popular websites such as wweshop.com, amazon.com, and walmart.com. We get a small thank you for every customer sent their way, and best of all, it doesn't increase your purchase one penny. Finally, get a free ride from Uber using the, the links below. Forget about overpriced taxi cabs with long waits. Join 2017. Get a good ride from a friendly driver in a clean car on us for up to $20. Run out of time, fans. Don't miss a day on bostonwrestling.com super site. Like us at facebook.com slash mwfaction. Follow us on Twitter at mwf2001 and subscribe to us at youtube.com slash bostonwrestling.com. <laughs>The Millennium Wrestling Federation's 15th anniversary tour begins this fall and rolls into 2017 throughout New England, down the East Coast, and into the Carolinas. If your nonprofit organization is looking for an interactive, turnkey experience while putting the fun into fundraising, you've met the perfect tag team partner. MWF offers a variety of packages for groups of almost any size. From our live events at the Boston Garden, the Kowloon Entertainment Dining Complex, and the legendary Suffolk Downs, to high school gyms and function halls, we've presented live events everywhere. Since 2001, the MWF's mission has been simple, keep the kids off the streets. Under the leadership of President Dr. David Reese, we bring the superstars of yesterday, today, and tomorrow to your town, not for a quote-unquote wrestling show, but an event that features action-packed in-ring wrestling, autograph and pose photo opportunities, question and answer sessions, and much more. It is the best of sports and entertainment. The week of your event, we can add on to the endeavor with anti-bullying campaigns, library meet and reads, youth sport concussion seminars, and more. Our live events are fit for fans of every age, from 5 to 95. This fall, as part of our new Kids Club program, we offer live event experiences exclusively for the youngest of fans. On the flip side, we can also produce a tailor-made event for fans of an older demographic as well. We work with you every single step of the way to get the word out to fans near and far, on our local television offerings, and to over 50,000 fans and growing on our social media platform. Your success is our success. If your group has had enough of boring candy bar and wrapping paper sales, and as the end to team with our passionate fan base bringing the mwf experience to your community is the answer to put smiles on faces while raising cash for your cause contact us today to get the ball rolling for your custom-made event that you want to bring back year after year don't just take it from us here are folks we've teamed with in the past know Kowloon Restaurant, established in 1950 and spanning four generations, serves a multi-Asian menu. Did you also know that Kowloon Restaurant is New England's premier Asian dining and entertainment complex, serving Cantonese, Szechuan, Thai, and Polynesian cuisine? And did you know that Kowloon Restaurant is also the home of the finest Japanese sushi? If you haven't dined at Kowloon Restaurant lately, then you simply haven't dined at Kowloon. Kowloon Restaurant, Route 1 North in Saugus.